Hello, everyone. I'm David Benitez, and this is Extreme Vocal Institute. And this week, we're going to be talking about metal vocal warm-up exercises and what specifically you need to be doing in order to get yourself ready for these kinds of vocals to be able to go at these types of things in a healthy and sustainable way. Now, I'm doing things a little differently this week where I have purposefully not warmed up my screams yet. So you're going to watch me do this here on camera in real time. Now, important note here is I did warm up melodically first because as I always say, all screams are pitch based. So warming up the actual vocal cords themselves and your singing voice is super, super important for getting yourself ready to actually scream and use metal vocals appropriately. So go ahead and check out our videos on both pitch screams and why melodic warming up is important and make sure you do that before executing the things we're going to be doing in this video. Now, there are many different ways to prepare your body and all of the different muscles and tissues involved in screaming for this type of activity, but I'm going to simplify this a little bit for you guys at home. And I'm going to break it into four categories. And those categories are activate, shape, elongate, and enunciate. Now these are all very crucial steps because we need to be able to actually get the sound going, turn it into stuff, be able to sustain that sound for longer periods of time because that's what our practicing or playing shows or being in the recording studio is going to be like. And then we need to be able to have the dexterity to not only have clarity in what we're saying, but to give the sound the type of energy and intensity to actually be sent out in the right way in the first place. Now where this starts, like I said, is activating the sound. Now, you can see our videos on our channel about false chord and fry scream as well and about the beginnings of how to make these sounds, but I will kind of demonstrate a little bit of that here. When it comes to the false chord, we want to do this essentially one of two ways. It depends on where you're at in your development and how your body responds to different things. For many, just doing what is kind of known as the dog bark method works because it just gets everything nice and activated. If you can think, bark like a dog. All right. Ruff, ruff, ruff. You can hear that deeper rumble. And it's not just a pitch. Ruff, ruff. You get that deeper fluttering that is the false chords added with the actual vocal cord sound ruff, to get the dog bark sound. Now, if you, if you have the tendency to push a little too hard to begin with and maybe activating it this way isn't the best option for you. What I suggest in that case is actually blending both the pure false chord sound and the vocal chord sound together, but starting individually. So getting what I call a drone sound in both. I'll do this with vocal chord movement, kind of in my speaking register. Uh, just somewhere where I speak from. Uh, and false chord movement. Now, some people approach this in different ways, methodically. I like to call this more of a cold breath because it's kind of like breathing like you have a bad cold. Some people think of it as sighing or grunting, which does work depending on who you are. Just make sure you're not overusing your air and accidentally teaching yourself to depend on that, that kind of wind feeling to activate the sound in the first place. Now I'll demonstrate. That's the false chords vibrating against each other. That's what they sound like by themselves. The thing that's missing is that vocal cord movement. So now I'm going to combine my vocal cord drone uh, and my false chord drone. Uh, and I'm going to combine them into one sound. Uh, hear that undulating? Uh, What I'm trying to do is get that sound to be a little bit more consistent so that I have the right amount of pure tone within the sound, which is the vocal cord movement, and the right amount of distortion and intensity that's coming from the false chord movement. All of that flapping and slapping together of the bigger folds that exist above the vocal cords. And it's getting them both to essentially work together until uh, you get something a little more consistent. You'll hear it took me a few tries to actually get things to sit in the right spot. That's okay. 
even when you're someone who's very experienced, it doesn't mean that your body is just going to get it right away. You need to still warm up your screams regardless of how comfortable you are or how long you've been doing this type of activity for. Now, in terms of the fry sound, which we've covered previously, I'm going to slip into my fry vocal register, which for those of you who are unaware, is just what happens when the vocal cords slow down to the point where you can actually hear the individual movement. Case in point. Uh... What you'll hear is, in the beginning, the throat may not be totally opened up yet because we're still in the warm-up process, so the sound might skip and jump a little bit. I'll give you another example. Uh... Now I'm getting it more consistent. Uh... Now I've gained a little bit more melodic control over it and the stability has more or less balanced out. That's what we're doing with all of these different activities activating wise. We're just trying to get everything to stabilize and make sure we're creating the sound the right way from the get go. Now that I've done this, I'm going to shift that fry register sensation to other melodic areas of my voice. Uh, uh, which is kind of like living in a voice crack, if that kind of methodology works for you guys at home. Like you're making a sound, uh, and you just kind of give up in the middle of it. Live within that feeling. Uh, and you'll notice the tonality is still there. Uh, uh, and I'm looking for more upper head resonance when I'm doing this, and I'm making sure I'm relaxing enough where that starts to happen on its own. And not by force, but by relaxing, because the nature of the sound in general is if you're not relaxed, the fry vocal is not going to happen the right way. Now, I'm just going to project that sound outward using a little bit of ah, ah, upper throat compression here in the pharynx. Ah, ah, that type of sound. I'm going to combine that with a little bit more air, and I'm going to open up a little bit as well. Ma, blah, ma, blah. It's only a slight adjustment air pressure wise, but the combination of projecting it a little bit differently, making that air adjustment and creating a bit more space turns that pitch shifted fry vocal register sound ma, and sends it somewhere. And then melodically you can choose which direction you're going in. Now we've activated both sounds. Now we need to actually take that core sound and turn it into something because that's not the end sound. If this isn't what you want and you're not quite happy with the sound yet, we're not at that point yet. So don't worry, so stay with me here. Now. We're going to shape this, and how I like to do this best is using the things that we're going to be using in context with songs, which is big, open vowel sounds. The key to really increasing tone and turning the sound into something is freeing up enough real estate to have both muscle and bone control over everything in the face, and keeping the body nice and loose so that you're able to move through these sounds without your body fighting back and decreasing the overall amount of sound you're making in the first place. I'll do this on false chord first, and I'm gonna go through the different vowel sounds. A, E, I, O, and U, nice and loose. You'll even, say, you'll even see how I just said those just speaking to you guys. I'm moving the mouth a pretty fair amount to get energy and clarity within the sound. I'm now going to do that for my vowel sounds here as well. A, E, I, O, U. The key is movement. Movement within single sounds. That's what's giving this energy and clarity and depth and tone and forward momentum. It's all in how I'm shaping the sound. That's why I call this such. I'll do it again. A, E, 
I owe you. And don't rush through this either. If you feel like the consistency of the sound or the balance could be a little better, go through it again, maybe slow it down a little bit. I E I O E Now I'm feeling my own consistency really starting to settle in. So now I'm going to do this in other areas of my voice. I'll move on to the fry, also from my speaking register around here. Uh, around this note ish. Yay! 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 Oh! Yeah! Now, still a little tight. I'm going to relax a little bit. So I'm showing you my balancing act in real time here. I'm going to scale back on the amount of energy I'm putting into it and see if that helps the sound settle. And I'll bring the pitch up a little bit. Maybe it was a little bit of an uncomfortable pitch for the moment. Ah, uh, maybe up here. Yay! Yay! I owe you! Already better. Hear how it's sitting? I e I owe you! Now I'm getting more consistency within that sound as well. And you can see my decision making here as well in terms of where I'm deciding to start the sound. Once again, all screams are pitch based which means where you choose to start from matters. I always say in the beginning, during the first couple of exercises you're doing, especially if it's right after you've melodically warmed up, just keep it somewhere comfortable. And if you aren't too melodically familiar with what you're capable of, comfort is key. Go with where you speak from. Kind of take whatever note it is you tend to hover around when you're speaking uh, and kind of base it, on, base it off of that. And that'll more or less help you to keep relaxed while you're doing this, because if you're trying to force a note down or squeak your way up without realizing it, that's going to affect your ability to get these sounds out in the first place. So make sure you're staying somewhere comfortable when just getting everything warmed up. Now that we've shaped the sound into other things, there are different ways to play around with that and get the rest of the body to follow suit. One way I like to do this a lot is through the act of Jumping jacks. Depending on where you are at the time, this can be a little silly or maybe even a little disruptive, but that's okay. Because what this is going to do is it's going to distract the body with full motion to the point where you forget to be tense when you're making these sounds. And at the top of every jumping jack, A, E, I, O, U, you'll be able to make another vowel sound. You can do this with the fry as well. I, E, I, O, U. And do a couple of rounds of that to get yourself really comfortable, both body, voice, and mentality wise, to be able to just pop the sounds out in any which direction. Now we need to stabilize things that much more. Because now that we're getting the sounds kind of flying out, we need to make sure we don't accidentally start to clench and tighten up and try and squeeze the sound out rather than allowing the sound to resonate naturally. That's this next step. Just like with your melodic warming up, things like long tones are important. And long tones are choosing a certain sound and holding that for an extended period of time. Not just as long as you can, just indefinitely, but for specific amounts of time. Like I tend to think, in around a second, so that would be like about that speed is kind of where I like to gravitate towards for the first couple of exercises I do in the day. And I'll try and hold a screaming sound, say on an A or an O, something nice and big and open because that's going to be more challenging. And hold that for about four counts. Uh, uh. without the sound wavering too much. And you can slow it down a little bit or speed it up a little bit depending on what's gonna be more comfortable for you. Same thing with the fry. Oh! Oh! 
you see what I'm doing? I'm just trying to sustain sound while keeping both the body, the voice, and everything else nice and relaxed. So in the moment while I'm sustaining, I'm not uh, trying to get louder and I'm pushing harder or like bending in half, losing good posture or squeezing more with the upper parts of the throat. I'm just letting the sound resonate naturally. Just like your standard singing voice and just pure tone phonation. You can feel the majority of your resonance up here in the skull if you can just allow yourself to do so. This is about keeping everything as open as possible to allow yourself to make the full amount of sound you're capable of with the least amount of effort. That's always the balancing act we're going for here. I'll even maybe combine vowel sounds. A -I -O -U. And try and move that up. A -I -O -U. A -I -O -U. That one skipped around a little bit too much for my liking. So again, balancing it differently. Hear how much more consistent that one was? I noticed that the sound was skipping around a little bit, and I felt a little bit too much going on here in the throat and in the larynx itself. So in scaling back energy-wise and push-wise from the diaphragm, I was able to more so find the balance for the upper register of my screaming voice. Remember, as pitch is moving up, you need to steadily back off of your air pressure and reintroduce it as you go back down, because that's just how the voice works. Now that we've elongated and we've stabilized the sound more so, and actually on that last note of elongating, you can go for longer than four counts if you become comfortable with that. If you can go for eight. <clears throat> If you can go for longer, that's totally fine. Just warm it up on different types of sounds without trying to distort it too much. We're not trying to have just the grossest sound or hold it for as long as physically possible. What we want is to be able to have big, open, and pure sound happen for the exact lengths of time that we want and need them to, because that's more so what's going to be happening when you're practicing songs, either your own or someone else's, when you're recording, and when you're on stage actually doing this stuff in front of other people. You're not thinking about holding it as long as possible. You know how long you need to go for. So in practicing with this kind of methodology, you'll be able to more or less teach yourself the muscle memory of being able to hold different sounds in a relaxed way for whatever amount of time you choose. Now we need projection and energy and even deeper tone to what we're doing. And where this comes from is how we pronounce our words and our lyrics and our phrases in the midst of screaming. This is your enunciation. This is that last step here. In order to do this, we need to be able to separate muscle movement from bone movement and be able to more or less get everything comfortable and relaxed enough where we have dexterous control of both things without everything just tightening up. Now, where I like to start with this is a couple of different face exercises just to loosen everything up. The first one is I'm going to move the lips forward and back, forward and back 10 times, kind of like a fish face or a kiss face. And what I'm not going to do is use the jaw at all. So I'm gonna go out, and in, out, and in. See the distance I'm going? Out, in, out, in. I'll do that with kind of a smile and a frown too, trying to keep it more or less focused on the mouth itself. So kind of bending up into the smile and down to the frown. Smile, frown, smile, frown. You'll see that when you're making sound when you're doing this, depending on which way you're bending the muscles of the mouth, you're either getting a brighter tone or a darker one because of what the muscles of the mouth are actually doing to bend your sound waves. This is going to matter a lot in context with your screaming voice, so that's why we're doing this as well. The last one is based on the 
also important duck face. What we're going to do is get that really flat mouth as flat as possible. And again, try and go for distance. I'm making sure to go straight out. I know this looks awful, but just bear with me. I'm going to go from open to closed. Watch this. Closed, open. Don't screenshot this. Now, what you'll notice is the distance that my face is going from the rest of my skull. You'll notice how far away my lips are from my teeth. This is very important because you are extending the vocal tract in this way, and you are creating a longer travel path for your sound to go through before it actually exits the body. In terms of classical and opera type mentality when it comes to singing, that is exactly how you can expand and project your sound in a totally natural, non-muscle tension based way. And this is going to apply to how we pronounce words. Again, just like with the vowel sounds, we need to have as much movement going on as possible, but in a totally relaxed way, because if you lock up, everything kind of gets frozen. Especially if you're someone that doesn't move your mouth a lot when you speak in the first place, this might be a bit challenging. So I recommend taking everything we're going to do moving forward and also practicing this in your speaking voice. Because the way we speak, the way we speak, is going to affect the way we scream. It's all you. We use our voices for everything all the time, and screaming is just a heightened form of communication. So if there are things like being kind of locked up when you're speaking that you know are tendencies you have, make sure you work extra hard at those things to be able to combat them appropriately in the moment when you are using your metal vocals. Now, this is kind of based on like old school kind of choir exercises or musical theater kinds of things, which are by no means things I've invented. We're just going through different little tongue twister type sounds, but adding the effect of our actual metal vocal distortion to make it that much more challenging. I'll speak these first and have you do them after I do. Here are the first couple. Mana mana mana. Nama nama nama. Mana nama mana nama mana nama mana nama. Bada bada bada. Dabba dabba dabba. Bada dabba bada dabba bada dabba bada dabba. Dada bada dada bada dada bada dada bada. Kada kada kada. Taka taka taka. Kada taka kada taka kada taka kada taka. Tada kada tada kada tada kada tada kada. And you'll feel that if different things are locking up when you're creating those sounds, that that's going to be accentuated when we're screaming. So we need to make sure to work those areas if you notice any tension in specific spots in the upper body, the shoulders, the arms, the neck, the back, the throat, your face, your jaw. Make sure you take some time to undo those things. Keep plenty hydrated because that will help to keep this muscle tension at bay. And then you'll be able to do what I'm about to do now and combine those exercises with screaming. So now let's try that again. False chord first. Mala mala mala. Nama nama nama. Mala nama mala nama mala nama mala nama. Consistency. Nana mala nana mala nana mala nana mala. Bada bada bada. Dubba dubba dubba. Bada dubba bada dubba bada dubba bada dubba. Dada bada dada bada dada bada dada bada. The hands thing helps sometimes. Gada gada gada. Taka taka taka. Gada taka gada taka gada taka gada taka. Consistency. Taka gada 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 gada. Make sure that you're not drying out in the middle, and make sure you're keeping the sound nice and consistent, and not stepping on the gas and then backing off of it. That last one dried out a little bit for me. I'm gonna do it again. Taka gada 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 gada. Hear how much more defined that one was. I focused more on the tongue movement and the mouth movement. If the tongue's kind of freezing up on you, you can move in clockwise circles and counterclockwise circles within your mouth, kind of swirling the tongue three times clockwise and three times counterclockwise. Mm. 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 And make sure that everything's actually moving fluidly and not fighting you. Do that a couple of times and you'll feel yourself having more control over the sound. 
I'll do this myself on the fry now. Mala mala mala, nama nama nama, mala nama mala nama mala nama mala nama, nama mala nama mala nama mala nama mala. Baya baya baya, jaba jaba jaba, bara jaba bara jaba bara jaba bara jaba, jala bara jala bara jala bara jala bara. Kala kala kala, jaga jaga jaga, kala jaga kala jaga kala jaga kala jaga. That one's hard because a lot of times the C's and T's can be very throaty, and we need to get them out of there and into the mouth in order to be able to execute the sound appropriately. That one was kind of tight. Versus, I loosened up the real estate here, and I got more sound out of it because of that. It's not always about throat compression, which I see a lot in the comment sections of different things internet-wise when it comes to metal vocals. If you can get your sound to be nice and big and powerful without it, then you can use little bits of affecting the vocal tract way more minutely and with a lot more moderation being practiced to be able to then enhance your sound that much further. What we're talking about here with these four categories for warming up your screams is just about getting your big, open, natural sound, both developed, practiced, and warmed up to be able to actually be executed appropriately in the moment with whatever your metal vocal activities may be at the time. Remember, activate, shape, elongate, enunciate, and especially that last one we just did, the moving around of the mouth and the tongue and keeping everything loose is actually what's going to create the kind of energy and intensity you need to naturally project your sound forward and outward into whichever direction you choose. Now. Like I said, it's very, very, very crucial to warm up melodically first before trying any of these things. If you're someone who isn't that musically inclined and haven't done much melodic warming up before, again, you can check out videos here that we've, where I've discussed these topics. You can use any sort of melodic warming up based in your comfortable register to be able to do so. As long as you're doing some sort of work to get ready before diving into this, your body will thank you, and you'll be that much less likely to get hurt down the line. Now, if you liked our video today, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. As always, I'm always super happy to bring you guys all of this metal vocal information and to be able to help out as much as I can. Go ahead and try these exercises out on your own with whatever different tones you're going for and have fun working on expanding and developing that sound again into whichever direction you so choose to go. As always, thank you so much for watching, and scream responsibly.